So the next panel, I believe, is getting queued up. NFTs in the marketing mainstream, how the world's leading brands are thinking about NFTs. And we've heard from some of them today, but there's, I guarantee, in boardrooms are meeting them right now. So we've got Jake Rosenberg, Matt Blumenfeld, come on up, Dave Feldman, and Joe Ruggiero. He's not here. Okay. Well, you guys take it away. Goodbye, everybody. So uh, we're, we're actually going to uh, talk about NFTs in sports. Uh, given the audience here, you'll, you'll understand why in a minute, um, given, the, given the shakeup of the panel. But uh, we'll do introductions real quick. Uh, Jake, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, my name is Jake Rosenberg. Um, I am the Vice President of Football Administration for the Philadelphia Eagles which has nothing to do with Web3, NFTs, crypto, or otherwise, but it's a personal passion of mine. Um, I deal with all the uh, financial aspects of our football team, uh, deal with a roster, and um, you know everything pertaining to strategic decisions at the football level, um, but I have a passion for um, NFTs and crypto and so my perspective is uh, somewhat unique as we look at you know, how NFTs relate to football and sports and athletes. Um, prior to working the NFL, I was a, a commodities trader. I worked in management consulting. Um, so a diverse and wide-ranging background. And uh, my name is Matt Blumenfeld. I'm uh, uh, driving PwC's uh, Web3 Digital Asset Strategy uh, which, you know, again, we focus a lot of our time educating the, uh, the Web2 traditional financial companies on what digital assets are, which includes NFTs and, and stable coins and CBDCs, on uh, how it's going to disrupt their business, helping them uh, think about uh, strategies so they can get involved in the short term, the medium term, and what it means long term for their business, uh, and then operationalizing that strategy, uh, which also includes sports teams. So, uh, Dave, why don't you give a quick intro of yourself, and then we'll, we'll kick it off here. For sure. Hey, everyone. Um, Dave Feldman. I'm the SVP of marketing for Dapper Labs, the home of NFL All Day, NBA Top Shot, UFC Strike, uh, and much more to come. Uh, I've been at Dapper for about a year and a half. I also uh, help oversee our NFL products, so that's near and dear to heart, my heart. Uh, and given that we're a sports uh, panel, or we're a makeshift sports panel, uh, I also came from the NFL. So I spent seven years at the NFL prior to Dapper, where I was a VP of social there. And prior to that, I was at Major League Baseball for seven years as well. So uh, definitely sports near and dear to my heart. I can't believe you left off Susables. Yeah, Susables, of course. Hey, very, check out our flow booth in the, in the, the corner there. But uh, so obviously, uh, we, we've all had different journeys into NFTs here. Uh, I think Top Shot was probably the, uh, the advent for many of us in the space, given uh, I think it was, what, January 2019 when it, it really took off or I guess February took off, January's uh, when I got involved in, in, in Top Shot, uh, went through the whole process of collecting uh, all the, the cool cats. It's a, uh, a series of NFTs that I, I like to think is one of the first utility NFTs, uh, given what it, what it enabled. But uh, Jake, why don't you talk to us a little bit about how you got involved in NFTs? Uh, maybe it was a similar story, maybe it's different. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it's similar in the sense that um, I got into NFTs uh, originally through Top Shot, just in terms of um, a lot of, you know, I just kept seeing it across my social timelines on Instagram and everywhere, um, and I really had no idea even what it was. Um, always, you know, been passionate about all the major sports and sports generally in my life, um, and you know, to this day I can remember getting in the car. Um, trying to find a podcast to listen to to explain to me what Top Shots was. Um, got through that segment. Next segment in the podcast was about um, creators and how you know smart contracts um, were able to pay creators in you know in a, a way over time that you know prior um, economies within the art industry hadn't been able to do. I collected. I have an interest in contemporary art, um, and it really just sort of clicked for me and you know that took off and I did a little bit of top shot collecting at the time but I really was kind of off to the races there and learning more about NFTs and that was the start of my journey. 
And Dave, what about you? And what what about NFTs has got got you excited? Yeah, I I also got into NFTs through Top Shot. It was actually January 2020, not 2019. Yeah, it hasn't even go. been that long. Um, but so, no, um, I saw them you know through social media also around January, and um, I reached out to an old colleague of mine who now was at Dapper, Katie Tedman, and I was like, you got to explain this to me. What's going on? And and I've been hooked ever since. Just a round of hands. Who got into NFTs through NBA Top Shot here? Any people? Yeah, I see a few. Okay, there we go. We're not alone. There you go. It's a, it's a, it's a common story. Um, so move, moving on beyond, beyond NBA Top Shot, uh, obviously in sports, there's a lot of different ways to use NFTs, and uh, it all starts with the player. So uh, Jake, are, are your players that, that you work with, are they coming to you and asking about investing advice in, in NFTs? Are they asking about how they can use NFTs? What, uh, what are the, the use cases you see with them and, and how are they getting involved? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I, over the last uh, six months, I would say um, it has definitely reached the level of um, a lot of our players where um, they're starting to ask questions, um, you know, within a NFL building, it really, it might be hard for people to understand how this all goes, but we spend so much time together. And I would say that's players, coaches, front office staff from, you know, off season through training camp through the season where it's like, uh, I don't know, imagine a circus traveling from town to town. Um, you know, we're in hotels together. We're in the building early in the morning till late at night, eating a lot of meals together. So you really get to know each other pretty well. Um, and I've become, I guess, the resident uh, NFT, you know, source of information. Um, so probably between staff and players, you know, 10 to 15 different people have come up to me, you know, with varying levels of um, sophisticated questions or very basic questions, explain to me what this is versus, uh, you know, I have a name, I have, you know, fans, how do you think this, this works for me in the bigger picture? Or, hey, I've, uh, you know, I, we won a Super Bowl several years ago. Uh, some things happened after, you know, that are uniquely linked to me. Can I monetize this in some NFT and, um, you know, open up some new revenue streams for myself? Or can I, you know, activate my own community of, you know, hyper fans and all that other stuff? Um, I think that those are all questions uh, that, that athletes have. Um, some of them probably haven't gotten there yet, but are coming around and hearing about it. You know, locker room typically is where these kinds of things take off, um, like wildfire. Um, we have, you know, a few players who are actively buying NFTs and then others who I think are in the, the stage of just trying to understand what it is. Um, a big part of my job is I deal with all the agents on player contract uh, related matters. Um, and I think that in the NFL, agents are capped at 3% uh, on what they get paid on player contracts. So from an, an agent who has the relationship with the player, they're always looking for additional ways, additional you know, streams of income, um, ways to monetize. Um, and I've gotten a lot of questions from them as well on you know, how, how they could take advantage of this how they could take advantage of the players, fans, and things like that um, down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think you'll, you'll see NFTs really opening up new business models in, in the sports industry. Obviously, with uh, players', players rights and you know, the Players Association, you're, you're limited in certain ways. And I know that's sort of where, where NFL All Day comes into play uh, with the moments from the games week to week. Um, I know that players are also using, you know, their celebrity status and NFTs in, in for good. Um, Dave, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how, what you're seeing from a player perspective? And then, you know, if you have any stories about. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. Just to kind of echo what uh, Jake was saying. So uh, I was actually at a conference during the NFL draft week. Uh, our CEO spoke and uh, Kelvin Beachin was on the panel with our CEO. Uh, Kelvin Beachin, like longtime offensive lineman on the Arizona Cardinals. He's on the Jets for a while. Uh, and he was saying like, just like how, kind of like what Jake was saying that like the culture around NFTs has really started like infiltrating like the locker rooms uh, within the NFL and that like conversations that used to be about, you know, cars or jewelry or whatever now are like, are becoming about like 
you know, do you have this board ape or whatever it might be? And that the NFLs, like the NFTs are really kind of becoming part of like the zeitgeist within uh, football locker rooms. And for us, like at NFL all day, like that's, we feel like we can at least be like an entryway just as Top Shot was to like so many consumers and, and players as well uh, into the NFL culture. And so we, we've actually onboarded over 100 players onto NFL all day already who, who signed up with accounts. And, uh, you know, just knowing that like, you, you know, you can own uh, the definitive like digital collectibles of players and their, their most iconic plays, I think is a pretty compelling value prop. But to, but to, to more directly answer your question as far as like some more philanthropic endeavors, shifting to sports a little bit, uh, we actually just recently did on Top Shot a few months ago a campaign with uh, Clay Thompson, uh, you know, NBA world champion Clay Thompson. And it was really around the, commemor the commemoration of like, him coming back. He was uh, on a journey where he, he missed 941 days uh, between uh, game appearances due to a couple of really uh, daunting injuries. And so because of that, he really wanted to, be, uh, to f figure out a way in partnering with us to, to kind of like up-level his foundation and like kind of show like the inspiring cause that, that, that he has become like an emblem of. And so uh, a really like significant part of the proceeds of, of a partnership that we had with Clay was around his 941 foundation, you know, commemorating the 941 days between uh, NBA playoff, uh, sorry, NBA game appearances. And so I think like that's just like a real small example of just like how players as creators, as influencers, as just like really kind of like, you know, icons in this space can help elevate and use NFTs for good in, in a way that, that very few can. And I think we really just kind of like at the, the tip of the iceberg as far as where this can go. Yeah, I mean, it, it all comes back to engaging the fan in a new way and really pushing the limits of, of what that relationship looks like. Uh, and so, you know, we, you can do that for good, you can do that for, for other purposes as well. But, uh, you know, I think one of the things that, that we've seen, and, you know, again, I'm going to go back to NBA Top Shots for a second, is, you know, we got to, as part of this Cool Cats uh, Nine Lives community, we, we got a, a special conversation with Kevin Durant uh, at, at one point. So you're seeing, you know, NFTs be used to provide utility in, in different ways where you get access to the athlete. Um, Jake, has, has, have you seen any uh, players come to you to try and engage the communities in, in better, better ways as well? Yeah, I think um, players are curious about that um, to some extent. Uh, the, the questions I've gotten are uh, largely from agents. Um, a lot of the new NIL um, conversations about engaging with um, you know, college athletes and what the best way is for them to kind of monetize their name and um, their platform you know, these, these conversations, I think, are, um, they really fit in really well with smart contracts and NFTs and the way that they can evolve, the way that they could accrue value, um, and also a way to reward, like, your earliest adopters, the people who believed in you and had the most conviction soonest, um, you know, if done correctly, uh, it's a way to, to reward those people, um, you know, almost from an investment in an athlete standpoint, um, you can you know financially benefit or or however it is. I think you know with NIL, um, we're I think just a year into it. Um, you know the way I look at it and the the conversations I have are that most agents, uh, very few people were really positioned in a way that. Um, to, to do it properly or understand kind of downstream and, and how to take advantage. So, you know, I do think that at some point here in the near future, someone's going to come up with a really smart, savvy way to reward the athlete, reward the earliest fans, and have a very cool, um, well-designed, smart contract-driven product that evolves over time or um, however it goes. I think that's a... Um, really a huge white space in this general area. Um, you know, and obviously people play fantasy sports and daily fantasy, so the, the concept is not any different where, you know, not that you're commoditizing the athlete, but you're aligning kind of investment and sports um, and your favorite athletes and, you know, the passion of sports fans as a whole. Um, so, you know, I think that, that that's a, an area um, that really dovetails well with, with this whole space. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a very interesting point there around the different technologies in sports, right? You know, sports gambling has become a, a very, very big topic over the past two years. 
uh, fantasy sports. You've, you've seen the ads everywhere. I know some of the, the companies are here. Uh, they've launched their own NFT platforms to, to sort of connect the different communities together. Um, you're seeing all these technologies sort of merge together and integrate. And I think, you know, the benefits of an NFT, you know, an NFT is really a, a container that you uh, can, can contain the data and, and other aspects of it. You'll see all these technologies merge together and create a, a more valuable story for, for the, the end user. Uh, and sort of the dynamic uh, aspect of NFTs and, and how you can take uh, stats from a, a game, uh, it'll immediately show up on, on your NFT and you can sort of take that throughout time with you. Um, so what, what's, uh, so we'll, we'll, go, we'll go back to all day here. What's, what's sort of on the horizon for all day on the roadmap? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot, and I'm, I'm happy to get into that, uh, but kind of just kind of like to, to peel the thread a little bit of what Jake was saying though. Like I think as far as having value as kind of being like a mutually beneficial relationship between like the fan and, and, and the player, there's a lot that like the power of the blockchain can do with that, just in a sense where like we can provide like and create leaderboards that are, that are player centric where like, you know, we've actually, we've already started doing some like uh, MVPs of it with, with some NFL players, but like we can definitively tell any NFL player who their biggest fans are on NFL all day. And like, and it's, it's undeniable. And like, that's something that's like, that's very, you know, based on whatever it might be, how many moments they own, uh, how much money they've spent and so forth. And then create like real unique money can't buy experiences to help reflect that and, and empower the player to, to like really kind of create that one-to-one -one relationship with their biggest fans, which is like very rare and like, like very special that, that few other type of collectible experiences can provide. So like, I, I think we're really just like, in the first inning as far as uh, like where this opportunity can go and, 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 far, and how far we, we can take it. And I think uh, we're really fortunate on the Dapper side with, with, our, with our sports products that like, like we fully feel that like in order to, to validate fandom and, and to, 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 to make this like a very um, enriching and beneficial experience beyond the monetary aspects of that NFTs have, that like we're, we're uniquely positioned to create that type of relationship with players, with fans, with sport, with, with, uh, with teams, with leagues that ha hasn't been done before. So that's, that's incredibly exciting. Um, as far as what's coming up next in the NFL all day, uh, we're really excited. Um, we just launched only in, in a closed beta environment. So it's really just invite only uh, this past uh, December. So, you know, we're still only a few months into our existence, but with the football season coming up, we're very much looking forward to, to launching in a full open beta environment where, where you know, to help celebrate the, the launch of kickoff and so forth, we'll, we'll, we'll be fully out to market and uh, we have a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of great pack drops coming up that, that I can't talk too much into yet, but um, I think there's a, you know, knowing how big and how vibrant football season is and how part it is, like how, part, how huge it is in the American culture, I think uh, there's just really no one inside as far as where we can take it as far as uh, NFL day goes. Awesome. And, and obviously, we've spent a lot of time talking about the, the NFT for the, the player and the consumer. Uh, I think they can be used beyond that for you know, the teams and integrations with the league and, and beyond that. Um, Jake, I, I know y you guys are, are, are thinking about all this stuff. Uh, from a personal perspective, what, where do you see the future of NFTs in sports for the organization rather than for the, you know, the player and whatnot? Sure. Um, and you know, I'm speaking personally, not on behalf of our team or the NFL, clearly. Um, but for me, I, you know, I think that the sky's the limit, and we're talking mostly about, you know, non-fungible, but, you know, from the fungible side of things and tokenizing fan bases and communities and using them as, you know, um, access passes and using them as a way to bestow benefits on, you know, your most ardent supporters, um, to me, along the lines of, what Dave was saying and, and how um, you know, clear these, these things become in terms of who are the fans that spent the most time, engaged the most, spend the most money, come to your games, like there is you know, proof of this. And it's not guessing and it's not um, you know, looking, slicing and dicing different demographics and hoping that you capture your best fans. Um, there's a way to do this and to reward them and um, have special events and things that um, pay them off, you know, essentially or pay them back for their, their loyalty. Um, I think those are really, really exciting um, things as I look to the future. Um, and yeah, I mean, besides all the other 
ways we've discussed with NFTs for specific players, league, teams? I mean, I think one of the things that I know we've been discussing with several teams is around sort of the gamification of attendance, right? So, you know, there's there's eight games in, a, in an NFL season for a home team, uh, 16, or I guess it's it's been up now. Nine, right. Yeah, we, nine now. Yeah. Yeah, we have nine this season. We have eight next season. And, yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, what if somebody goes to all all eight or nine games, right? You know, maybe they get a special airdrop in their, their digital wallet of, uh, of a special NFT that gets them access to, you know, sit, sit on the field or something of that nature, right? So there's a lot of interesting things you can do and gamify this, not only just for season ticket holders, but, you know, you focus on that group first because they're your most engaged fans. Um, so I think you'll see a lot of the, this happen over time. Uh, obviously, none of us are speaking on behalf of the, the league or any team specifically. This is just personal uh, stories here. Um, you know, obviously, with, with Top Shot and All Day, you guys are, are looking at the gamification of this as well. Um, any, any thoughts on the, the topic, Dave? Yeah, like, like we have relationships you know, with, with all 32 clubs uh, in the NFL and all 30 NBA teams. Um, we started exploring team-based NFTs. Uh, we've had a really soft launch pilot program with, with a handful of teams that we did over the last six months that we're looking to um, bring into the full all-day ecosystem. And I, I think you're kind of on, hit it on the nose that, that I think it'll be like a natural evolution as far as like where team uh, NFT capabilities can go is, is really limitless. I think it really can become like much more community-based uh, rewarding those that, that, that are part of this program in unique ways. And, and luckily, I think people how, how the Eagles reward their, their fans can be very different than how the Bucks reward their fans and so forth. So I think it would be really interesting to see where the space evolves in the next you know, two, three, five years, whatever it might be, as far as where, where really football-centric, team-centric uh, community kind of evolves in a much more IRL way uh, as a stadium being the, kind of like the, the fertile ground for all that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think the uh, the other interesting thing that you've seen certain teams do, uh, some some have been more successful over the, the past decade, let's call it. Uh, you know, the, the Golden State Warriors uh, with their, their last championship released a exclusive NFT to commemorate that. Um, I think they're doing it again this year. I haven't really followed it too, too closely. But, um, you know, other other interesting ways that uh, teams are getting involved there. Um, Again, not speaking on behalf of the Eagles specifically, but do you see a future where uh, teams do something of that nature, Jake? Yeah, I mean, I think that it makes a ton of sense for you know, all the reasons that we've discussed. I see you know, applications into ticketing specifically, um, and you know, all this basically crossing over um, into all kinds of different ways to engage, create keepsakes, you know, separate markets for collectibles, you know, I, I see this being one huge pond kind of for um, non-fungible and fungible tokens, but being on blockchain um, and having the ability to, you know, transfer tickets, have special editions of tickets that go to certain fans, um, you know, cutting out ultimately for teams to capture more of that revenue um, from secondary markets and tickets. You know, there's just so many different ways where you could see um, how this improves um, transactions of, of a whole, you know, a whole different um, variety, and not to mention the ability to um, really galvanize your fan base and track them, and you know, globally. I think there's just so many different different ways that this is applicable um, and could make sense for teams across across leagues. Yeah, I think you, you made an interesting point, and, and it really, it's it's all about aligning the incentives across the the value chain, right? So not only is the team getting a, additional revenue, the the fan is getting additional benefits out of it, uh, and and even you know giving some back to the players, and and really uh, aligning it across all the stakeholders. I think that's one of the the real advents of uh, or ethos of Web three in general. Um, it also relates to brands, which I guess was the the original topic of the panel, but uh, you know tying tying it back to the title here. Um, so I know we're, we're nearing time here. Um, Dave, I'm going to put you on the spot here and you can decline to answer, but you, do you have a favorite athlete that you've worked with as part of your, uh, your dapper or prior, prior NFL MLB experience? Oh man. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been a bunch. I've been very fortunate to cross paths with a lot of, one, a lot of, a lot of athletes. Um, but I don't know, I, I was fortunate to be on set. Uh, we did a commercial with Kevin Durant, uh, this past year for NBA Top Shot. 
and uh, I played a, uh, a role in that, and it was cool to be on set with, with KD, uh, you know, in, in uh, Thompson Square Park, right uh, downtown in New York. So that's something something I'll never forget. And then, as you were referencing earlier, he really kind of wanted like make sure he had like a real presence on our platform and like like really was part of the community. So he dropped in our Discord channels. Uh, he's tweeted about us a bunch, and I think uh, there'll be a lot more to come. So no, that that's definitely one that comes to mind. Yeah, and actually, you know, with Kevin Durant and some other of the NBA players, you've seen them get heavily involved in this space and and really are pushing the limits of what this can mean in sports, uh, bringing their own unique perspective uh, to the space. So not just NFTs, but going beyond into crypto and and, and whatnot, but um, I don't know if you want to answer the question. You have 20 seconds. Otherwise, we can uh, we can call it a panel. No, I have nothing else to really say on a specific on a specific. I hope we win another Super Bowl soon and have a chance to you know commemorate that with an NFT, which was not a thought for us way back in 2017, which feels like a long time ago. Well, thanks, guys, and uh, thank you everyone for for joining us here. Thanks so much.